Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So for those of you who've watched the channel before, you will know that um, we've got an air-to-air -air heat pump heating system, which is, um, you can see one of the indoor units uh, just there. Uh, this is basically just air conditioning, but um, it runs in heating mode during the winter to provide our heating for the, for the house. And it's worked brilliantly last winter and so far this autumn, and no problems whatsoever. But the one thing that the air-to-air -air heat pump system, or at least our one, doesn't do is hot water. Uh, if you've got an air to water heat pump system, um, that will do your hot water and your heating and you're all set basically. Um, but for us, uh, we don't have that uh, ability. Um, some air to air systems can do hot water and I wish I'd known that before I set out on this journey because I might have uh, chosen a different system, but there you go, such is life. Um, but uh, we're in the situation at the moment where we use an, our immersion heater to heat our hot water because we've got rid of our gas and we no longer have a gas meter and we've removed our gas boiler. So let me show you, this is our current hot water setup. We've got a standard unvented cylinder. As you can see, this is the picture I took in our airing cupboard. Um, and it's a pretty big cylinder. As you can see, these uh, little pipes at the bottom here are, have been disconnected. So that was the feed from the, uh, the gas boiler that would have heated our hot water previously. Um, but currently we're actually using uh, this little thing here, which is an immersion heater. Basically it's a little electrical um, rod that, that pokes into the cylinder there and electric current goes through that and heats the hot water. Uh, there's actually another one up here, but it's not wired in. I don't know why the builders didn't wire that one in. Um, they've only wired in this one at the bottom. That's fine, actually. It's not too big a deal. Um, but you can see um, that basically this heats everything above that line. So it heats about two-thirds of the tank. And turns out that's completely fine because this tank is way bigger than, than Cat and I need. So heating two-thirds of the tank each day um, is more than enough for us. We also have an eddy uh, device, which is a, sol a solar diverter that we could use to um, heat our hot water using excess solar. And we don't tend to do that actually. We tend to just um, run uh, this in timer mode, basically schedule during the off-peak period for whatever tariff we're on at the time. So during the winter, it's Octopus Go, or um, hopefully we'll move on to Intelligent Octopus at, uh, at some point. But for now, we're on uh, Octopus Go, uh, which means we can heat our hot water for nine pence a kilowatt hour um, during the off-peak period. Uh, during the summer, we were heating it overnight during the, uh, the flux off-peak period, which was about, I think it was about 16p a kilowatt hour, something like that. Um, so it worked out roughly comparable in price to heating the hot water using gas. And that's fine, and that's all, all good and well, but um, really if we could um, heat our hot water using a more efficient method, then we could reduce the amount that we're, um, we're using for heat, heating our hot water in terms of both kilowatt hours and cost. So that would be great. So there are a handful of ways that you can reduce the amount of energy you use to heat your hot water. The obvious one is to use less hot water. Um, but let's make the assumption that we're not going to be reducing the amount of hot water that we that we use. Um, so let's assume that we're continuing to use five kilowatt hours worth of hot water per day. But what we could do is find a more efficient way of heating that hot water. So the undisputed king of efficiency is a heat pump, obviously, which could reduce that by a factor of two and a half to three, something in that ballpark. So that could reduce our um, energy requirements for our hot water down to about two kilowatt hours um, per day or less even. Um, and the other option is to find a better, more efficient way of storing that hot water. So reducing the amount of heat that's lost during the day after the hot water has been heated. Um, so there are various ways of doing both of these things. Um, I'm going to show you a handful of them today. Uh, this is not a comprehensive list by any means. I'm almost certainly um, going to miss some things out. I'm not going to be able to cover absolutely every possible option for heating your hot water with uh, electricity. So if I miss out uh, your personal favourite, apologies for that. Um, but So yeah, just consider this a, a sample. Um, and if you're interested in um, doing something along these lines, then this will give you a starting point um, for your own research. Um, but yeah, so let me go through a few of these options. Um, my personal preference is a heat pump hot water cylinder. So I'm going to leave that to the end. And in fact, I'm going to dedicate an entire extra video to that um, that will follow on from this one in this little mini series. Um, but uh, I'm going to go through some of the other options that aren't necessarily heat pump based, but will give you that better efficiency in terms of storing of your hot water. So you won't lose as much energy from your hot water um, while, you're, while it's sat there in the tank, for example. But before we get into any of the sort of high tech uh, options out there, I just thought I'd very briefly mention the fact that you don't need a fancy um, eddy device or solar diverter to do hot water heating if you're only interested in doing it on a schedule. You can buy a simple timer like this for about 20 quid and that'll allow you to set up you know, a weekly schedule to uh, take advantage of um, off-peak uh, tariffs, for example, like Octopus Go. 
Uh, this would basically wire into um, your immersion heater directly. You set it up as a schedule and, uh, and away you go. So this won't give you any more uh, efficiency. It won't improve the amount of uh, energy you use. It won't reduce that at all. Um, but it's an option if you um, have an air-to-air -air heat pump system which doesn't do your hot water and you're quite happy to use your immersion heater. This is the sort of thing that you can get and uh, very cheap and easy to install. So if you already use an unvented cylinder to store your hot water, you might find replacing it with a mixer G cylinder like this one would give you a, a small efficiency gain. So mixer G uh, cylinders work in a slightly different way to a standard unvented cylinder. Normally, an unvented cylinder would, uh, would heat the hot water from the bottom and it would fill up the entire cylinder. Whereas a mixer G tank actually um, heats from the top and it pushes the, water, the hot water down as it fills up. Um, which means that you can um, get away with, if you don't use the full cylinder's worth of, of hot water, if you only, say, use half of a cylinder each day, then the Mixergy tank will only fill up to halfway, and that means there's less hot water there to lose heat, which means that you will lose less energy uh, during the day while that hot water sat there ready to be uh, used by, by you whenever you need it. Um, you've only got half the amount of, uh, of hot water sat there losing half the amount of energy. So if you've lost less energy during the day uh, from your hot water, then you need less energy to heat it back up again the following day, which obviously then leads to uh, lower bills and lower energy usage. Um, and uh, the other advantage of um, the Mixergy tanks is, of course, that some of them actually can be plumbed in directly to a heat pump. So this would be an external heat pump that sits outside your house and provides the hot water feed into your Mixergy tank. You can actually do this with a standard unvented cylinder, and in fact that's usually the way um, a normal um, air-to-water heat pump system works when it's providing your hot water. Um, but the Mixergy tank, obviously, being more efficient than a standard unvented cylinder, could give you um, slightly, great, slightly more um, energy savings savings than doing it um, with a standard unvented cylinder. If you, if I was going to do go down this route, I would definitely want to do it with a heat pump. However, um, as I've explained before, there are dedicated heat pump hot water cylinders. And in fact, Mixergy themselves have brought out a dedicated heat pump hot water cylinder recently. And um, I'm going to go into that in a lot more detail in the next video. But basically, it's a heat pump that sits on top of the cylinder and uh, does that heating for you, rather than having to have an external heat pump that sits outside your house. So although most of the options I'm showing you today will involve electricity heating your hot water in some form, there is of course the option to use the sun itself, and that's called solar thermal. So you may have seen this sort of thing before. Uh, this arrangement up here is something that's probably more common in Australia or, or South Africa. Um, in this country, uh, you're probably more likely to see something along the lines of these things here, these evacuated tube panels, or maybe these uh, flat plates. Um, but basically what happens here is when the sun's shining, it will heat up these tubes with, um, hot, with your hot water basically uh, running, or rather cold water comes in, runs through these tubes and then gets heated by the sun. And then that goes back to your cylinder and gets stored for, for use later. Now, uh, this is a good system. Obviously, basically, uh, you get your hot water essentially for free completely, um, but um, it's not as good in the winter. You might need some supplementary heating, and obviously it needs um, some installation and some roof space for you to, to mount these panels. Um, and uh, it obviously has quite a significant cost for doing that installation. So this is not the cheapest option by any means, um, but it might be a good option if you have a nice south-facing roof that you don't currently have solar panels on, for example. If you've got a little bit of spare space, then something like this might be really good um, and uh, certainly something worth investigating. So it's pretty typical to use some sort of uh, cylinder to store your hot water, but if you don't have a lot of space, um, that might be uh, an option that's uh, unavailable to you. So one thing that might be worth looking into is something called uh, phase change or solid state um, energy storage. So um, this is a, a company called SunAmp, and um, there are others, I will show you another option in a second, um, who do a similar product. But basically, this is a sort of a small box that's um, uh, significantly smaller than um, a standard unvented cylinder, but inside is a material that um, uses uh, phase change to store energy rather than hot water directly. Um, and what I mean by phase change is that basically there's this sort of um, uh, a sort of solid, ma solid-ish material. So you have a series of pipes that run through this material, and when you pass um, hot water uh, through these pipes, heated either electrically or through a heat pump. Um, it will change the phase of the material surrounding it from a solid to a liquid um, and that phase change actually stores an enormous amount of energy. You store um, quite a lot of energy in order to convert something that's solid into a liquid 
um, more so than just heating that material up in the first place. So for example, um, heating ice to turn it into water um, at, at zero degrees takes the same amount of energy as converting um, uh, water from zero degrees up to 70 degrees. So um, storing energy in this way can, means that you can use much less material to do so. Um, so what then happens is essentially you have a much smaller volume of material storing the same amount of energy. So then when you want to retrieve the energy from this energy store you pass um, cold water back through these pipes that gets heated up by the material which is now at um, you know 60 or 70 degrees and uh, that delivers your hot water to you um, and then eventually this will uh, change back into a solid and when all of the energy is depleted. Um, but essentially all this means is that um, you can use much less space to store the same amount of energy. And of course if you're storing that energy in a smaller space then there's less surface area from which that energy can escape and which means that you lose less energy during the day in the same way as the mixergy tank where if you've got less hot water, if you're storing less hot water then you lose less energy during the day uh, when it's just sat there. So Sunamp provide a range of different sizes of these um, energy storage devices from uh, these tiny little boxes all the way up to some uh, quite chunky devices depending on how much uh, hot water you need in a given day. And um, you can uh, heat these in a number of different ways as well using sort of um, standard um, electrical immersion um, elements to, uh, to heat the hot water that flows through these in order to uh, store that energy. Um, and in fact, they also have a, a heat pump version um, where you plumb it directly into a heat pump in the same way as, um, as you can with the, the Mixergy tank. So again, if I was to go down this route, I would definitely go for the option that allowed me to plumb in uh, some sort of heat pump. Um, but we don't really have room for an external heat pump, which is why I've got a preference for the, the, the heat pump hot water cylinder, where the heat pump is actually integral to the cylinder itself, um, which means I don't need an, an additional external heat pump um, outside the house. So this is the sort of option which would be well worth considering if you don't have a lot of space inside your house for uh, housing a very large hot water cylinder, for example. And just for completeness, uh, Sunamp aren't the only company selling these sort of phase change heat storage s systems. Uh, another company called Fisher are doing a, a very similar product. In fact, it looks almost identical to the Sunamp version. So my suspicion is that actually these are the same unit. They're just being branded and sold by different companies. Um, but there you go. There's a couple of options there uh, if you want to look into this. And some of you might be asking, well, if you're storing your hot water and it's losing energy all the time, surely it's more efficient to just have on-demand hot water. And that is absolutely an option. Uh, and in fact, I just did a quick uh, search on Screwfix and there are tons of electric combi boilers like these ones. Um, absolutely loads of them, in fact, uh, all the way down here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's totally an option. Uh, and I wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't argue against getting one of these, except for the fact that... Um, they are very, very high powered. And if you've got um, a battery storage system or, um, or solar, then you don't really want to have an on-demand uh, hot water system which will draw 14 kilowatts all of a sudden um, because that means you're almost certainly going to be drawing from uh, from the grid at peak time. Um, whereas with if you're storing the hot water, you can heat that up uh, off peak times or with um, excess solar, for example, uh, and uh, make it much cheaper to do it that way. So I would um, prefer not to go down this route. I know some people would prefer this sort of option if you don't have any room at all for, for example, uh, an unvented cylinder or um, one of the Sunamp or Fisher um, heat storage devices, um, then this would absolutely be an option. But it's uh, definitely not something that um, I'm going to consider for our particular situation. So that brings me finally onto my preferred option, which is the heat pump hot water cylinder. So this one on screen here is the Valent Arrow Store uh, heat pump cylinder. And this is one of a few options I'm going to describe in much more detail in the follow-up video to this one. So I'm not going to go into all of the nitty gritty details here, um, but uh, just to show you uh, what one looks like inside, uh, Valent have provided a very handy cutaway. So as you can see, a heat pump cylinder is just a standard unvented cylinder. The actual hot water is stored down in the bottom here. Um, but it's actually got this heat pump sat on the top, integrated into the cylinder itself. Now this is exactly the same as any other standard cylinder. It's got a compressor and pumps and all that other stuff and a heat exchanger you can see. And what happens is air gets drawn in through one of these vents, um, preferably from outside. So you obviously need some sort of um, uh, pipe to connect it to, the, uh, to your outside wall. And that pulls in the air, does the, the heat exchanging um, with the, the, the compressor and all that stuff going on in there. And then the cold air then gets expelled back out through a different vent. Um, and that again goes back outside your house through a, through a different pipe. Now that then heats your hot water, fills up the cylinder 
and uh, away you go. And this can provide your hot water an efficiency of somewhere between two and a half and three. So for every kilowatt hour of energy you pump into the, the heat pump, you get two and a half to three kilowatt hours of hot water, basically. Um, so that's why this is my preferred option. It's um, significantly more efficient than any of the other options I've described before that don't involve heat pumps. You can get, as I said, you can get heat pumps um, that plumb in uh, to standard unvented cylinders, but that requires then for you to have a heat pump sat outside your house. Um, and uh, I don't really want to do that. We've already got two heat pumps outside our house. I don't want a third one. Um, so having this um, integrated into the, um, the cylinder itself um, makes it uh, quite neat. The one disadvantage of this, of course, is that the um, heat pump itself does create a little bit of noise, which is why I'm going to be moving our cylinder down into the garage where it's out of earshot, basically. But I'll describe all of that in a lot more detail um, in the follow-up video to this one. But that's it for now. If you've been thinking of replacing your gas hot water system with an alternative, then hopefully this has given you something to think about and uh, somewhere to start with your own research. Um, but I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.